Good evening, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and wait just another minute or two before um, I know we have about 30 people signed up for this evening's uh, webinar. So just hang out for a little bit. I appreciate everyone signing on early and, and um, looking forward to spending some time with you. So we'll give everyone else just another minute or so to, to get themselves on. All right, looks like we have a few more people signing on. Jenny, why don't you give me the thumbs up or give me a signal when you think it's we should go ahead and get going. Okay, I think we'll go ahead and start. First of all, I just want to thank everyone for signing on tonight and partaking in this great educational opportunity. I've actually um, participated in several of the Windrush Farms um, webinars and they've just all been really great. Um, I also do webinars here at our hospital and I just, I'd like to have this be as interactive as possible. So looking at the list of sign-ons, I just want to say hi to Barbara Rector and Kat Davis, folks that I know and, and my friend Nancy Beers from down there by Colorado Springs. Um, I, I recognize a few other names from listservs and other groups that I'm in, so I really appreciate you all being here. Uh, tonight's title is Working with Horses, a New and Different Educational Outing. Um, I do work at a rehab hospital here in Denver. I'm going to give you a little bit more information uh, about our, our facility and our hospital as we go. So let me hit the click. Craig Hospital is a 90-bed, uh, not-for-profit, freestanding acute care and rehab hospital located just south of Denver, Colorado. We provide uh, comprehensive inpatient and outpatient medical care and comprehensive rehabilitation. For nurses and healthcare providers out there in the world, we are a magnet certified uh, center and, and just recently this year received the magnet prize for one of our programs. So we are a rehab hospital providing care for people only with spinal cord injury and brain injury. Um, I am, my position here is the coordinator of patient and family education and I have been in my position for about 16 years. So I do a lot of program development I do a lot of uh, teaching, I do a lot of group work, um, and also individual work with patients and families, and I also work with our staff on being better facilitators of education. In, over the last five years, I've become more interested and involved and educated around equine facilitated work, primarily uh, the Gestalt uh, Equine Psychotherapy Program, as well as EGALA training, and just lots and lots of reading. Um, and working with people who, who have been in the field. Uh, I like to say working, getting as much as I can from the giants in the field and Barbara Rector is certainly one of those giants in the field. So as I went through this process of my own learning and that, that included not just training as a Gestalt equine psychotherapist but my own work in horsemanship and learning to deal with the horses myself, it really, I learned a lot and uh, kind of in a nutshell, um, you know, from my own work with horses, I really felt that I wanted to share what I learned uh, with the patients at my hospital. So that's why I introduced this program 
uh, to the folks at our hospital. As you can see from that slide, that's just a few of the learnings that I take away that I took away early on. But as every week as I ride and every week as I learn to be with the horses, I learn and take away so much more. So this working with horses program has a, a pretty broad foundational basis. Um, uh, n n you know, these are just kind of in the order of alphabetical order, and they're not in a, an importance order or, or anything like that. But um, as an educator, I really believe in the dialogic uh, method of teaching and learning. And one of the great uh, teachers that I have in that field is Jane Vela, who's uh, the head of uh, global learning. And, sh and Jane uh, put together uh, something called dialogue education, where as educators, we actually are in dialogue uh, to speak with, to be in dialogue with, with our, our students, not just a monologue approach. Um, I also have been through the EGALA training and, and talking with Lynn Thomas around, you know, how, how dialogue and how this whole EGALA model works. Um, so I've incorporated certainly uh, some of the EGALA model into my work. And then my two-year training with Dewey Freeman and, and Joan Regeer here in Colorado, uh, the Gestalt Equine Psychotherapy Program. Um, which is a two-year uh, uh, program, pretty intensive program, uh, very experiential. Uh, that is, so that I am dual, dually competent in both my facilitation skills, but also my horsemanship skills. And certainly, uh, as a nurse, um, my whole foundation for getting into nursing was around uh, my experience of a, being a patient, because I, I do have a spinal cord injury. I was a patient here at Craig Hospital uh, just about 25 years ago. And it spurred me. Uh, it spurred my interest into going into healthcare, and really finding out about the healing. And to me, the healing takes place in relationship. And so my nursing um, education is built on the theory of human caring. Consulted with Barbara Rector and Beverly Kane uh, about uh, January of 2011, out at the EGEA conference out in Valley Ford, uh, California, and then also uh, continued reading. Um, and you know, observing other programs and trying to find what was the best uh, to incorporate into our work. Now, as many of you know, and I, I'm assuming that, that many of you are in this field, there's lots of ways of describing work with horses. And I think one of the seminal uh, resources in our field is the Walking the Way of the Horse by Leif Halberg. Um, and I, I use this slide to educate other, other groups as well. But as you can see, there's lots of different ways to describe um, how horses and humans can work together. So I use this slide to educate people who are maybe not in the field to let them know that there's lots of different ways to, to approach this. And what I, I do is I call our work with our horses and our patients is working with horses. I simply just say, we're gonna go do some work with the horses. So as I introduce this uh, pr uh, program to our patients here at the hospital, um, it, is, it is truly an educational outing. And, and for some of you that are not familiar with rehab, but rehab is really, uh, spinal cord rehab, is really to prepare people to live out in the world, to rehabilitate them to live full lives and active lives. So here at our hospital, in addition to the everyday therapies, the learning about changes in the body, um, you know, practicing self-care, our patients go on a number of outings. They can go any, anywhere to the Broncos football game, to Christmas shopping, like we took 50 patients to the mall this past week. Um, patients go, uh, they can go just about anywhere. So this outing, the Working with Horses outing, is really educationally linked to the, the classes that they take with me uh, as in preparation for their discharge. So when I introduce this to the patients, I introduce it as an educational outing. It will be fun and we'll do lots of great things, but it really does have an educational focus. It's an opportunity for them to stretch themselves. Um, our patients are always stretching themselves, but I really believe that the working with the horses takes them to the, another level. Um, it's an opportunity, uh, opportunity for them to develop self-confidence. It gets them ready to go home, and they can do therapy while working with the horses. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that. I also want to say that you know, as an interactive facilitator and teacher, um, I can see all your little icons there and who's here and your name. Um, but if you have a question or a comment along the way, feel free to text that into the chat box. And um, I will do my best to address that question um, and hopefully have a little bit more dialogue because, uh, you know, I'm really more of a live audience person. So um, I would really appreciate you uh, 
speaking up if you, if you have a question or a comment. All right, here we go. So what, uh, this is another, another slide that I use with the patients, but I, I invite them to, to come to work with the horses. I, I talk about the why horses, and I know on several of the listservs and um, other uh, educational opportunities, we always talk about why, why the horses. And so I, um, I let them know the horses are big. You know, the horses are very aware. Uh, uh, those of us in the field know a lot about their masters of nonverbal communication. The horses are also kind. Um, and for patients who are newly injured, going out into the world with um, a changed body, uh, with physical deficits, with functional limitations, being in wheelchairs and using equipment that they never thought that they would have to use, it's kind of nice being around a horse that, you know, doesn't really care if somebody's in a wheelchair or um, has some paralysis. So they are very kind and the horses want to connect. They're also very curious, so um, uh, you know I, we let the we let the patients know that the horses will want to get to know them as well. They're social, and they do want to be be with you. Where where we do our program is a a, a really great facility out in Parker, Colorado. Uh, it's the Saddle Up Foundation. Their whole mission is to provide uh, equine um, services for people and their families, people with disabilities and their families. So they have a full slate of outpatient therapies, uh, PT, OT, um, speech. We've also recently started uh, an equine uh, facilitated psychotherapy program, equine assisted learning, um, as well as taking our, our uh, unique Craig Hospital program out there. They do have uh, PATH, sorry, I didn't change that slide. <laughs> NARA PATH certified staff, they are fully accessible. And um, I, I've spent a lot of time at Saddle Up. I really checked out a number of facilities in the Denver area, um, not only to find a barn where I could uh, take lessons and continue with my horsemanship training, but also what would be a good fit. And from all of the places that I visited here in at least, I didn't visit every single one, but I probably visited and, and um, got to know at least six different programs here in the Denver area. Uh, I still feel that Saddle Up is the right place for us um, from a, a number of different um, a number of different areas. So uh, being the teacher that I am um, and the dialogic uh, training that I've had, um, I, I also I, I develop kind of an outline and I, I recall just recently this past week or so someone um, on one of the listservs and one of the groups that I'm in said always come in with an agenda but you may not have to use it. So we do go in with an agenda. Uh, some of this we, we do actually use uh, quite a lot. We we start with a welcome and with barn rules and safety. I really am, um, I want my my patients and anyone participating to be grounded uh, and aware. Um, we, we don't, we, we're in the barn, we come together as a group first. Uh, we work with some body awareness, some breath, um, and, when, and then we do an opening. And everyone, uh, staff, the equine staff, the Craig Hospital staff, the patients, patients' families, um, and myself, we always do an opening check-in, which is what do you bring to the barn? Um, because I want people to, to get centered. I want them to get present, um, you know, before we even start uh, our work with the horses. So it's very, it's pretty interesting. Some of the things that are, you know, what do you bring to the barn? A lot, some of it's um, anticipation, um, excitement. Uh, some, some people are very honest and say, I bring, I'm scared, I'm, I'm fearful, I don't know what's going to happen. And um, so we spend some time just getting everyone with their feet on the ground, their butts in the chair, uh, before we start making our contact with the horses. And then what we do is we, um, we divide our, uh, I work with the, the Saddle Up staff before we even go out there. Uh, I let them know who the patients are because I'm doing recruiting now, actually. Our next, our next uh, outing will be uh, Wednesday, December 19th. And I started recruiting last week. I, I did my introductory um, session with the patients here uh, as part of our classes. And um, I already have three patients who are like, put me on the list, I'm ready to go. So I already know something about the patients. They have to be fairly close to uh, discharge. So I share that information with the um, Saddle Up staff so that they can get to know kind of an idea who's coming. We talk about level of injury. What are some of their needs? Um, what's go issues? We talk about um, therapy goals that the therapist um, might might also want to be attended, um, and we go from there. And so what we do is we we have we put them in little groups. Um, 
we have a, a patient, a horse, a saddle up staff, and a Craig Hospital staff. And those that, that little group or little pod works together for the entire two hours, two to three hours that we're out there on site. So then after that, it's it's we do want to do a lot of relationship building. So I, you know, I told the patients, I, you know, I want your dirty by the time we're done here. You know, I want your hands on the horses. I want you to get as close as you feel comfortable and as close as that horse will allow you. And most of the time they do come back pretty dirty and hairy. So we, we throw in, you know, we can do grooming. We can do, um, we want to make contact uh, with the horse. I, I've used the Consu Permiso quite a bit, Barbara, uh, from your work about, you know, asking permission. May I have, may I come into your presence? Um, so we can do, we do grooming, we do haltering, we do leading, lunging, and I'll show you some pictures um, as we go here. At the end of the day, at the end of the time, we come back together. And, uh, and as we did with a check-in, we do a check-out. And so that question is, what are you taking from the barn? And as I like to explain, this session outline is just the little bitty piece that I know. And then there's this whole big piece of things that happen that there's no way that I can know or anyone can anticipate. So the closing of what is it you're taking from the barn really becomes the, 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 the really cool stuff that happened uh, during that session. And some things that we hear are, uh, well, I'll share, those, um, I'll share those results with you as we go. But that's kind of my outline. I mean, I do go in with kind of an agenda, uh, you know, for some structure. Uh, but then I also, we also know that, that there's lots of ways that uh, this work can go. So we have opens for, openings for that. Um, since we started this program, our first um, session was April of 2010. Um, this was actually, uh, this, this pro program was actually my final project for my work in the Gestalt Equine Psychotherapy program. And uh, I was just um, thrilled that we were able to get it going and off the ground and and into the arena. So we've done nine sessions since then. We've taken uh, about 21 patients, maybe a couple more. Family members come, so we have 18 family members come. We, we, we bring our Craig Hospital staff. This is a really interdisciplinary effort. Um, we have a very strong um, rec therapy program here, recreation therapy. And so recreation therapy is our support team as far as driving the bus. Um, and uh, they also spot patients, so they're, they're, they're equally involved um, with the sessions. I've had um, physical therapists, occupational therapists from our hospital come out who work with their patients while they're working with the horses. We've had a, a variety of um, the saddle up staff and, and we open it up to um, you know, any of the equine staff at saddle up who'd like to participate. And, and I know that the, the, um, the uh, saddle up staff just love our program. They, they just really appreciate being involved. Uh, Saddle Up has about 16 horses, and we use a, a traditionally about you know a, a, about seven of them. Um, we bring out Toby, the little horse, the short horse there, tor uh, towards the end of the programs, because as many of you know, um, the little horses can have big horse personalities. So Toby's one of those. He gets to come out at the end and wishes goodbye. So I, I talked a little bit earlier about patient readiness, and I think this is really important. Um, you know, our patients uh, have gone through a tremendous change in their life, a tremendous change in their body. Uh, so there needs to be um, certainly attention to readiness. Um, like I said earlier, uh, they need to be close to discharge within two to three weeks. They need to be actively participate, uh, participatory in their rehab program. They have had to have gone through either completed or almost completed my education classes which are um, an interdisciplinary series that they learn about their bodies, both physically, mentally, and emotionally. Uh, recreation therapy is a big part of those classes, um, and then also learning about self-care. Um, I, I, when patients self-identify that they like to be a part of this, I then take uh, their name and I, I attend weekly rounds, and I ask, you know, I let the team know, the docs, uh, the doc, and the uh, rehab team, that this patient is interested in the equine program. What do you guys think? Um, and uh, so far I've never had a team say absolutely not. Uh, sometimes we've had patients that as we get close to the, to the outing day uh, come up with some other medical complication and, and have to be uh, scratched from the, from the trip. But um, I'd say every, anyone who says they want to go, I rally for them and um, advocate for them. And their teams are very, very interested 
in them going. And they have to have an interest and desire. So that's what I mean about um, having being self-selected. Okay, I know that there's a number of people out here who've joined since I started. Um, so like I said at the beginning, if you have a question, a comment, um, want to say hi to each other, uh, please feel free to text. Um, you know, I'm much more of an interactive teacher. So I just want to make sure you guys are still alive out there. Okay, moving on. One of the other things that we do, um, we're, we're very attuned to safety. And uh, so even though the horses at Saddle Up are familiar with power chairs, so the big wheelchair power chairs that they that many of the, the kids from the, um, the outpatient therapies pro program may use, our patients, uh, one of the things that I, I, I do make as a have to is that patients have to be able to spend the two hours that they're on site in a manual chair. So this, this young man actually came out on the bus in his power chair. We brought his manual chair with us and then the staff transferred him into the manual chair. My reason for that is that we're really trying to make as many um, accommodations to safety as possible. Um, I just, we've never had a horse bolt. We've never had uh, any spooks um, that, uh, you know that that we've needed to be concerned about but I I want to make as we all know horses are horses um, and I want to make sure that if we needed to move that patient quickly that being in a manual chair we would be able to do that uh, they're getting him set up in his manual chair we also make sure that the wheelie bars are on so we don't have any unexpected you know tilt backs or fallbacks uh, I see Natalie just signed on instructor at Turning Point in Oklahoma and a wheelchair user due to spinal cord injury welcome Natalie nice to have you uh, appreciate you uh, introducing yourself. Um, like I said, you know, we we usually go out because I know who the patients are probably a, a couple of weeks before we go. And as I work with the Saddle Up staff about kind of matching, um, you know, matching temperament, matching needs, ma matching issues, matching function, and so on, we usually uh, we usually have some idea of what horse and what patient we're gonna put together. But on this day. This young man, we had a, uh, a horse picked out for him. And we were in the barn and you know, we do everything right, right in the barn and, and the horses are right there in their, in their stalls. And all of a sudden this, this horse, Prince Philip, just kind of let us know verbally that you know, with lots of head shakes and lots of um, noise that he wanted to be picked. And so it was very interesting a uh, very interesting um, situation where we put the original horse away that we were going to put this young man with and we brought out Prince Philip and it was a great two-hour session with these two and I have some other pictures down the road but but this is the kind of sensitivity that uh, I believe is really important in this work that we listen to the horses that we pay attention uh, you know to you know to, to what's going on with them and uh, it worked out so great uh, for this patient and and I, I, I put this slide um, title as choice and being chosen because as a person in a wheelchair, um, oftentimes um, we can be not seen out in the world. And so for this guy to be seen by this horse and for this horse to be seen by this patient, I felt were really, really important. So um, we, uh, this is Isabel, the white, the white Welsh pony. She, you'll see her in quite a number of slides. Uh, so once again, we do matching, um, you know, with a sense of who the people are and who the horses are. We, we also work a lot with, um, you know, in, in rehab, we're constantly telling our patients to direct their care. You know, you've got to be able to direct your care. You've got to be able to tell people what you need and have them help you. But we never really talk about or help patients understand what is exactly directing your care mean. And I think this is a really great metaphor and a really great teaching opportunity with the horses because like I say to the patients and as I'm working with the patients in their little groups is if you were just going to yell at this horse or you were just going to take a, a whip and start beating this horse, is that directing care? Well, no. And I said, well, when you're working with staff or when you're working with people that need to provide care for you, is yelling at them and maybe throwing things at them going to be the way to get your care done? And it's like, oh yeah. So we, they actually get to practice, you know, better communication, um, kinder communication for themselves and and the horse and the people that they're working with. Like I said, we bring family members out there with us. So um, even though he was supposed to be grooming the horse, his wife was grooming him. 
So uh, they, they all have a good time. It really is a great stress reliever time for everyone involved. And uh, oftentimes we see family members really, you know, taking some time just to enjoy and to have a good time is really important. Uh, we spend a lot of time making contact, um, you know, really just breathing with the horse. I, I talk a lot about um, horse time and slowing down uh, in our rehab process. It's very, very, you know, we're fast, you know, we're trying to get everything done. We have insurance companies saying, you know, patients can only be in the building for 30 days or 60 days. Um, the staff have demands on patients. The staff have demands on themselves. So we really take this opportunity in our Working with Horses program to slow down and to connect and to really use our time with the horse to bring our breath down, to uh, get more in contact with ourselves, get more in contact with the horse. So if, if, a, if a patient for the whole two hours just wants to spend time um, grooming, hand grooming, hanging out, uh, that's okay. I mean, we have that. We have our little, you know, list of things we could do, but to me, that's just a list. Really, what's important is what what actually goes on during that session. So, uh, in this particular, um, this is Slick. This is a big uh, quarter horse. He um, Slick is from Southern Colorado. He's uh, been retired um, to uh, saddle up because his owner Adam, is, which is the man with the blue shirt who's the executive director of Saddle Up said, you know, it's time for, it's time for Adam and it's time for Slick to um, maybe change careers. So Slick is a big member of the therapy program. I ride Slick uh, as part of my, my training and, and learning. Um, but we, he was outside, We're, we can be outside on this facility as well. So in this particular slide, um, the, the patient and Slick were, they were working with trying to get the patient to take back control and be a leader. And I remember the patient saying, oh, well, I can't, my hands don't work. And so we, you know, Adam and uh, Sharon, who's a physical therapist behind, uh, you know, and Slick were like, well, and this man actually was a, a jockey. So he knew that it just wasn't his hands that, that worked the horse and got the horse to move. So just re-educating, reminding people that leadership is less about function and more about energy. And what comes from within, uh, to me, is an invaluable lesson. We work with uh, confidence in a new environment. Our patients, like this, this young man, um, was working on some gating and some ambulating. And sure, he could do that gating and ambulating in the, in the gym at the hospital, but it really goes up a notch with confidence when um, he, he can walk and take uh, Isabel uh, on the lead you know, through the barn. So it's just taking what we do usually in rehab and, um, and uh, taking it to a new level with the horses. We get the, uh, the, get the patients involved in every aspect of care that's possible. So uh, cleaning hooves, hoof picking is another one. Um, this is another great story. Um, this young woman um, was a little tentative at first and you know, wasn't quite sure she really wanted to get that close to uh, Isabel. And eventually did, kind of worked her way in and um, you know, found her level of confidence and her, her level of ease and got to be so close with Isabel and spent the whole two hours um, that, that I don't know if Isabel had any hair left on her by the time they were done, but Mandy, the, the young woman, was covered with white horse hair. And um, she, um, she um, came back to the hospital covered. She didn't want to get cleaned up. She just said, I just want, and I actually have a clump of Isabel's white hair on my desk that Mandy gave me as a goodbye and a thank you um, when she was discharged. So, so it was really cool. I mean, um, it was really, it was really, it was cool that she had the dark blue clothes on so that the white hair really, uh, really stuck out. So I see that Jeannie um, made a comment. Thank you for mentioning energy and function. I use that a lot. Um, I, I really believe in that. I believe in intention. I believe in um, energy. And I think sometimes with our spinal cord patients, we get so focused on what function do they have, and sometimes they don't have enough function to lift a feather. But um, really looking at that inner energy, I, I, I haven't mentioned it here, but in an article that I wrote um, in the spring issue of Strides for PATH, um, I talked about intentionality. Um, I, I talk about really, you know, really using the, the muscles of the heart and soul 
and that our work with the horses is really a great way to um, develop the muscles of the heart and soul. Like I said, we spent a lot of time getting to know each other. This was Prince Philip and that young man um, that I showed earlier in the in the uh, talk. Uh, that, you know, really, if they just want to spend two hours hanging out, that's fine. Um, there's no have tos here. Um, you know, we do talk about functional uh, goals and stuff, and you know, I get the therapist to uh, identify a functional goal like reaching or strength or safety or confidence, and eventually those will be attended to. But there's no have tos. Um, that we we do here. We do a lot of grooming. Here's Slick and another young man. Um, Slick's a great guy. He just kind of hangs out and um, he's big. He's really big. So if any of you able-bodied folks that are used to spending time around horses ever want to see what it's like to be around a horse from wheelchair height, I'd, I'd highly recommend it. And if you plan on working with people with um, disabilities and people who use wheelchairs, I would like to suggest that maybe you try a little bit of time yourself seated in a wheelchair just to see the different perspective. It, it is different, um, especially with the big, big horses. Well, really any horse, but the big, big horses, you'll see for yourself that, um, that it is a different, uh, a different perspective. Um, this is uh, another great example of how we can incorporate functional goals into the Working with Horses session. So this, uh, this gentleman was working on some gating. You can see he's about six foot something and his therapist is about five foot three. Uh, this is Randy, a big, um, a big halflinger. Um, so, you know, he actually did his uh, walking while he, he stood to do grooming. He walked around um, Randy um, in the barn and it turned out to be a really great experience for him. Uh, cleaning hooves. Now this was, uh, this was a great example of how even though this young man didn't have finger, he didn't have fine motor control, we found a way and we just kind of stuck the, the hoof pick in his, um, in his gloves. And uh, he wanted to get in there and get as close as he could uh, to the horse. So, um, you know, we don't, we don't use fancy equipment. We, we do have some brushes with Velcro straps on them or other adaptations. But, and, you know, and good therapists, OTs in particular, are really great with, uh, you know, just slapping some, um, Velcro on something or some tape and, and just really making it work. But this time we didn't have to do anything fancy. We just stuck the hoof pick in his glove and voila, he could do it. I think this is a really important concept, um, being part of the herd. Uh, you know, and as we work with horses, we know that the herd behavior, the herd mentality, the being part of the herd is really, really important. Um, uh, and, I, and as a person living with a spinal cord injury myself for almost 25 years, um, being a part of a herd, being accepted for just who I am is, is always really, really important. And the horses have just such a wonderful way of doing that. So we spend a lot of time, um, you know, they're little groups. I mean, they're, their group is together for the two hours at least that, that we're out there. So they become a herd. They become their own, uh, their own entity and giving the patient some time, um, uh, you know, with their herd is really important as the leader of their herd too, and providing leadership. And thank you, Barbara, for your uh, comment. Absolutely. Um, this is another cool thing. This just happened in our last outing a few months ago. Um, we, uh, we, this is a young man who was injured paraplegic and he had two young children and his wife. And I had, this is the first time I had done this, but um, we, we decided that it was going to be the family and it was going to work with Isabel in this. And so we made it, we made, we made it like as a, fa a family going home with dad injured, dad moving around differently. Could dad still be dad? Um, so they spent um, the whole time with Isabel. Um, they did a lot of grooming. We set up a, an obstacle course inside the barn uh, that the family actually led Isabel through. And the little girl, um, you know, she, she got to spend some time in the leadership role as well as dad. And then it was really about reestablishing their family roles and connections. I, I just really, it was just a really beautiful thing. And then the group that I'm taking out in a couple of weeks, I have another, we have another opportunity for a father and his two children to go out together. So we're going to make that uh, a family experience as well. So it was just really cool. I mean, once again, we didn't have to do anything special. We just did the normal things that we would do with the horses and make it more of a family uh, thing. Um, 
just once again outside the uh, the facilities at, at Saddle Up. Um, in, in the, and since we're kind of in a drought here and we don't have any snow or rain around, it's pretty dry and hard packed, so we can get outside a lot even now in December. Um, so being outside is really, really cool and fun with the horses. We set up a lunging station, and I know, uh, I know some facilities have really great, like, concrete, round lunging stations, and boy, I'd love to have one of those one of these days, but what we do is we have these rubber mats, and what we do is we make a path, all the way out, all the way out, all the way out, and then we make, we build like a little um, six foot, seven foot square platform with these rubber mats, and we do lunging. And um, this is another really great opportunity for using that metaphor of directing your care and using your energy to move the horse. And it's really, really fun. It's, this is not an activity for every single patient that goes out there. Um, some patients, you know, don't want to uh, or don't have the function um, to do it, but we actually, we get as many people out in our lunging station, our lunging platform as possible. Uh, we also do, if patients are um, able to ambulate, do some walking. Um, we do lunging uh, from a standing position. Um, this is a really funny story. This gentleman here and his therapist came out and the therapist said to me, you know, he needs to work on walking, but we haven't really done that much back at the hospital because I don't know if he's ready or not and whatever. So I said, okay. Um, so he comes into the barn in his wheelchair. He gets uh, partnered up with his horse. He spends some time getting to know the horse, connecting, making contact. And he he takes the, the uh, lead and he goes, I'm ready. And he stands up out of his wheelchair and he starts walking out of the barn with the horse. And the therapist was like running to catch up with him. But it was just, and he had had, he had, had horses in his life. He was a horseman himself. But it was just really cool how the motivation of being around the horses actually spurred this patient to do even more than he had done back at the hospital. So that was just um, one of those really cool things that happened that I couldn't plan for uh, that I like to share with you guys. So what I do, um, I do collect data on this. I have a pre and post assessment that I do um, uh, that I have the patients fill out before they go. Um, and I'm happy to send this these pre and post assessments to you if, if you have interest in seeing them. Um, you know, looking at, real, since this is an educational outing, um, you know, the questions are about confidence uh, in directing others, positive relationships, demonstrating caring, using clear, effective communication, once again, confidence in directing care, um, establishing safety and confidence as a leader. So we do these pre and then we do these post uh, as well. Um, I. I I have, I'm not, I haven't kept up on my data analysis, but I have 12, um, an N of 12, and I'll show you uh, the data, how, it's, uh, how it is in, a, in a, um, a graph. But the areas that I've seen the increase in score is pre versus, pre versus post, is in directing others to assist me, uh, increasing in score in positive relationships, and increase in confidence in directing my care. The areas that I've seen a decrease in, in their scores is establishing safety for their self, confidence as a leader, and using clear, effective communication. And without doing a major analytical statistical an analysis of this, what what I think I see, or what I what I'm what I'm pretty sure that we're seeing as a result of patients participating in this program is actually this may look like a negative, like a decrease in score, but to me, it's actually an increase in self awareness that maybe that by being around the horses and working with the horses, they're actually getting a little bit more aware of safety issues, um, that their confidence may not be quite as much as they thought it might be in the hospital. Because in the hospital, it's pretty protected. Um, you know, you can be really confident inside this building, and then you get out into the real world, and it's a whole different ballgame. So I don't see this as negative. I see this as an increase in self-awareness. Um, you know, and uh, once we analyze these a little bit more, uh, maybe we'll find that out. So basically, here's the chart uh, from the seven questions, the uh, red being the, the post-test scores, as you can see, increases, increases, and then a couple stayed the same, and this one um, went down. This was the safety question. Um, and then uh, I also have them describe their experience as awful, just okay, good, or best ever. Um, and those are all uh, quite high. Uh, I think, I don't know what the mean is, but it's all, they're all good or best ever. Um, so that's pretty good. 
And then um, would you rec I also asked them this, would you recommend this? Um, uh, would you recommend this to other patients? And um, wholeheartedly they say yes. Um, and this one that says it was missing, so I'm not quite sure. I see a body language as communication with horses difficult from the wheelchair. So um, I'm not sure if that's a question or if that's a statement. So Catherine, if you want to uh, um, clarify that a little bit for me, um, I, I, you want to clarify that because I don't know if that's a question or if that's a statement that in your experience, body language as communication with a horse is difficult from a wheelchair. So why don't you clarify that for me and we'll address it. Um, I also uh, have some open-ended um, responses, uh, opportunities for people to do open-ended responses. So uh, in this one I say the, the, the open-ended thing is make a statement about your experience. Um, and uh, here are some of the responses. It gave me confidence. It's soothing and exciting to be so close to the horses. I could work with horses without being able-bodied. Um, it made me feel good, which you know to me is really important because rehab is really hard. Um, so if they can spend a little bit of time feeling good, I think that's great. Um, interesting to see how horses interacted with me and it filled a void for me. So I think these are very telling um, about patients' experiences in this program. Here's a typical post-session um, picture. Um, you know, we do this with every every uh, session. We have Greg Hospital staff. We have Saddle Up staff. I'm in the middle. Um, this is me. Um, uh, and here's our family, the little family. Here's a young man and his girlfriend were there. So um, really, really fun. We try to do a group. Um, uh, we try to do a group shot. Okay, so. Okay, so Catherine, that might cause increased awareness of body language limitation for your less confident analysis. Not a question, just an observation. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it could be because I think uh, this is about awareness. You know, people haven't spent a lot of time out in the real world and with the horses, um, it gives them a shot of uh, real world um, exposure. Um, might cause increased awareness of body language limitation with your less confident analysis. Yeah, could, could be. Could be. So I've shared this a lot. Um, we've had quite quite a bit of um, press um, uh, with some local uh, publications here in the in the Denver, Colorado area. Um, uh, like I mentioned earlier, the story in Strides in the spring uh, 2012 edition. I've presented it at a lot several conferences um, because I, I think it has a lot. There's a lot to this, and um, to me, it's one of the unique ways that horses and humans can work together um, and particularly it's very unique in rehab um, and I, I just love it I, I always say that I got I get so much from working with the horses I continue to do that if I could just give my patients just that little taste a little touch of what this is about um, I feel that it, it would add so much to their rehab experience um, like I've said all along, I think working with horses offers um, very much a health and wellness orientation. They are, it's certainly a communication skill builder, vocational awareness, relational skills practice, um, functional uh, living skills development, and, and on and on and on. Looks like Natalie has a comment from a wheelchair. I can breathe into the horse's nose like they breathe on each other, and it seems to put them at ease in a way that someone standing cannot. Absolutely. I love that. Um, I think it's also interesting, I don't know, Natalie, if you've had this experience, but once I'm on the horse and my wheelchair's down there, they, or let's say I'm walking on my crutches because I do walk with crutches too, the horses just love to stick their noses all over my wheelchair. Um, so I think that to me is another way that they're getting, they're make, they're getting to know me as well um, because our wheelchairs are so much an extension of an extension of our bodies. They are not us, but they are certainly an extension. So where do we go from here? We're going to continue um, program development. Like I said, we're, um, we're going to go out in a couple of weeks. Um, how I work this with Saddle Up is we go out. Saddle Up has like an eight-week programming. Uh, they go eight-week programming, one-week uh, makeup week, and then one week of break week. So there's no other programs going on. Um, I see uh, our horses do that while I'm in their wheelchair. Very good, Natalie. Um, so we go out during that break week, and the reason why I do that is because I, once again, from that safety perspective, I want to decrease uh, any possibility of interference or 
you know, nutty things going on with other clients and horses. So we go about every two, two and a half months. Um, it also gives the Saddle Up staff an opportunity to be involved. Um, if I could go, if we had a, if we had the barn right outside, we go every week. We go, uh, you know, several times a week because I think this is so important and um, so beneficial. But right now we're doing um, every two, uh, every about every two, two and a half months. So we go out. What I'd like to do from a program development standpoint is um, have uh, an outpatient program uh, for people who are, have been discharged and are living out in the community of, of the Metro Denver area who would come out for a week, or uh, I'm sorry, once a week, uh, you know, for maybe a six or eight week session around same kinds of things, you know, confidence, communication, leadership, uh, you know, body awareness. Um, I think there's lots of things I, I, I you know, I don't think it has to be called a psychotherapy program. I, I think all of this is about learning and good psychotherapy to me is about learning. So um, I don't want to scare people away from calling it, um, by calling it a psychotherapy program. To me, it's equine assisted learning and learning about self, learning about others, learning about horses, learning about relationships, um, I think are all very, very invaluable. Uh, currently, the way that we fund this program, because I'm sure some of you are wondering about that, is we have a, a foundation here, uh, Craig Hospital Foundation, um, and then I, I do have quite a bit of, uh, we, we have funds that are put into a patient education fund, and um, I can use those funds for anything that's deemed educational. So this is very educational. So what we do is I pay Saddle Up uh, $60 per, uh, per patient per hour, um, and then the Craig Hospital staff, we are paid, you know, because we're working, um, if our PTs and OTs go out, they charge if they're, you know, as if they're, they're do, they are doing therapy. Um, but we would like to, uh, we would like to uh, be able to raise some more funds for that. We have had former patients contribute to this fund, that the, the funds that they contribute are used only for the equine program. So we have, we have ways of, um, of being able to support our, our, our small program as it is. But I would like to do uh, some bigger um, funding grants for uh, um, you know for, for folks out in the community. Uh, for, so Barbara says I call it equine facilitated experiential learning process work wellness work with horses and educational model love it. I mean I'm all about experiential learning Barbara so I certainly appreciate that um, as far as what you just wrote. Um, I want to share this program with other rehab centers and other therapeutic riding programs. Um, we did get some exposure in the strides um, article and I did have uh, one other rehab program contact me to to maybe assist them in getting something going. I think it can really it's really great. Um, I, I just think working with horses. I I can't think of any other thing that I'd rather be doing. Um, like I tell people, I'd like to have my office in a barn, uh, and maybe one of these days we'll get there. Um, we have actually expanding to include TBI. That's uh, traumatic brain injury and outpatients. We actually have had um, so uh, we have actually had a few. Uh, as part of our 20, you know, almost 25 patients who've gone out, we have had a couple of folks with TBI uh, join us, um, and that's been great. We actually had a, a couple of patients who had dual diagnosis, so they were dealing with a spinal cord injury as well as a brain injury, and um, we were able to do some great things with them out there, so I'd like to have a program that's, that's more geared to just the TBI population. I think it would be really great for them. And I really want to do a much better job of evaluating the learning impact and transfer of this um, of this work because I think it's really important. We all have to um, be able to have some evidence that our programs are making a difference, which I know they are. Sometimes I think what's what we're lacking are the tools sensitive enough to detect what effect this work is having. Um, so it's kind of like, you know, we're doing the work, we're doing the work, we know things are happening, it's all really great, but we don't have the tools, the tools that, um, that would provide us that evidence. Although in our hearts and, and seeing the, what comes out of this work, we know that this work works. So, um, so we'll get there, as we all know. Um, I think this is my last slide, and this is a nice close-up of Toby. Um, he's quite the little troublemaker, but um, we bring him out and... Uh, he uh, hangs out with us um, as we're getting ready to go. So I think that's it. And then this, um, this link right here is a news story that was done uh, on Nine News here uh, in Denver. Uh, so when you guys get the, 
when Jenny puts this back out for folks to look at it again or get the resources, you can you can do that. And I think that may be it. So any any other questions? I do appreciate the questions, comments, interaction. I know it's hard on a computer, but if there's any, um, we have a little bit of time left. If um, if anyone has a question, comment, or any of you, maybe you guys could also tell me if you're doing anything, uh, you know, particular with people with spinal cord injury um, in your uh, programs. Um, we certainly have time to uh, to do that. How many patients do you normally take out to settle up? Okay, um, I, we take a, a maximum of five. And the reason why I five um, is because from a safety standpoint, from a... Um, space management perspective that's about it um you know we have the outdoors we have the indoor arena we have the the barn which is fairly big or the uh the, the alley in the barn which is pretty big um so you know we we want to be able to have space so five is our max um let me let me address this other question of concern about horse pulling lead line and pulling person out of chair well, as you know, there's a proper way to hold a lead line, so we would never have them wrap it around themselves or wrap it around their arms or their chair. Um, so, so no. Yeah, I can understand your concern, um, but uh, we would not have it so that um, that line is attached to the person, which would then pull them out of their chair. Uh, do patients come out more than once? Um, sorry, no, because... <laughs> This is the, they, they, they go out as an inpatient getting ready for discharge and then they discharge. And about half of our patient population lives outside of Colorado. So once they're gone, they're home. Now, if I can get this outpatient program going, then we can have uh, people who have done it inpatient and then continue on as outpatients. I would love that. Um, do the, okay, do you have a leader on opposite side? Uh, you mean as far as like when the, patient was leading slick outside um, we well I'm not quite sure so that we would have the patient leading and then somebody else leading we we try to give the patient as much control as possible um, typically a, an equine specialist will be on the other side of the horse um, but not but only there uh, to 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 grab the horse if needed but if the patient's leading the horse the patient's leading the horse um, Hoping to start working with spinal cord patients in Central Florida. That's great. Um, give me a call if you if uh, if I can help you with that or give you any hints or suggestions. I think that's really great. I I um I just think there's a lot that can be done, and I know everyone's doing a lot of great work out there. So so keep it up. Okay, I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. Oh wait. As patients, oh good, Barbara. As patients depart for other areas of the country, are they referred to path program that works with spinal cord injuries, i.e., trot? Yes. What I do is I um, uh, not only are they learning the hands-on work and going out with the horses, but uh, I also inform them that there are other places. Um, and I know trot is really great. I think you guys have that concrete, um, really cool lunging platform, which I'm very jealous of. So. Um, I would certainly um, refer patients to you, but I also want, uh, yeah, I, I do give them uh, ref referral information if they so desire. Okay. All right. Well, thanks very much. My contact information should be a part of the information on my, uh, like Jenny said, the recording will be up um, tomorrow. Oh, your lunging clock, right? That's right. That's what it's called. Yeah. It's really cool. Um, so please feel free to uh, be in touch with me. I really appreciate you all with your questions, uh, comments, and uh, great seeing some folks out there that I know. And um, hopefully we'll see each other uh, out there in the world. Take care, you guys. Bye.